So in this week's music notation and publishing class, we were looking at um, this Stockhausen uh, six Gruppen um, cutaway score. And uh, we looked at the skills to create this as well as a bunch of other um, uh, interesting notations, things that perhaps break the rules um, uh, that we've been learning over the first five weeks. So rather than uh, making you go the whole way through the um, uh, the uh, lecture video if you need to revise any of this I thought I'd just make a quick video showing how we can create this kind of score. So the first thing to note is that some of you tried making these as separate systems um, but the problem that you have if you want to do it like that is that actually these are bars that are lined up and the rhythms are aligned so we're much better it'll be, create a lot of fiddling if you don't use Sibelius's um, actual um, uh, alignment, automatic alignment. Um, so you're going to need to work out uh, what the time signature is at the start of the excerpt. This is uh, the page that we put in in class, not the one that you're doing for the challenge. Uh, put in that time signature. Don't forget to uh, delete it afterwards because it shouldn't be on this page. On yours, there's also some changes of time signature just to throw in a few extra challenges. Um, my advice is to leave all of the uh, bars in as you put in the notation and then do this cutaway stuff later. So in Sibelius I've just um, opened up a um, one of the templates, one of the Sibelius templates. Uh, obviously you'll put in the correct instruments. I'm just going over to the layout page because that looks to me like it's a little bit... Oh, it is all set to A3. I'm going to make those staves even smaller, just so I've got a bit more space. Um, go check out your rustral sizes. Um, and, whoops, that just managed to undo that change. That's fantastic. Okay, um, so what I, oh, I see what's happening. Then I press page up to go up the page, and it completely confuses Sibelius. And then I type 30 millimeters, and yes, all going extremely well with this demonstration. Uh, so the way that we make, let's imagine that we've got some music in here and we've got some music here and this section in between is going to be cut away. So the way that we do that, as you will probably remember if you're in the class, is with um, uh, instrument changes. So we click change under the home tab and then we go uh, down to others and some of the last settings in here are no instrument hidden no instrument which is still hidden except the bar lines are shown and no instrument bar rest shown. I also mentioned, just for the record, uh, that you can also click on the little extra dialog box edit instruments um, button there and you can go and create uh, new versions of that for instance if you want um, let's just go and find it, uh, well, not that I can think where it will be others and all the way down the bottom here we go so let's just go and say create a new instrument based on bar lines shown uh, we'll call this one no instrument bar lines shown but if I go and edit the staff type I could have key signatures in this one which would be strange why would you have a key signature if you have no staff but maybe we would want it so I'll say bar lines and key signatures shown so you can play around with developing your own kinds of uh, hidden staves. Um, and then when you're ready to make the change, you can click Change. I don't have a selection in the um, score at the moment, but I'll show you it with one in a second. I'm going to choose No Instrument Hidden. And then uh, it will always, oh, not always, but it will usually snap to a bar line. Uh, if you zoom in, you can make sure that you have uh, either connected it or not connected it exactly as you need it. Um, and then when we're ready to go back to the instrument, if it joins again in here, we want to do a change back to the correct instrument. Now again, um, we talked about the fact that you could go, say we've got piccolo 1 and 2, uh, that you can go into here and edit the piccolo. Um, uh, Stockhausen uses German names um, for things, so you might want to go into and, and change you know, what is just normally trumpet one or trumpet in B flat or something to use Stockhausen spelling. Um, you won't automatically get these instruments exactly where you need them, but Sibelius will um, create the instrument name. I'll 
actually show you rather than just talk about it. So let's go and find the pick. Oops, there it is. Okay, I have no selection. So again, I'm going to click where it goes in and I can move that to wherever I actually need it. Uh, and one of the things that you can do, you can hide this bit of text if you don't want it and then manually uh, go and put the text here like Stockhausen has it. Uh, but you can also, um, if you've renamed it and that's the correct text, you could manually put it there yourself. Obviously you're going to have to do things like align um, and make sure that the spacing is right and all that kind of stuff. But you might, that might be something you leave till the end when you know you've got the format of the page just right. Um, other things that you might need to think about here. Well, let's let's actually let's just do that change again now with a selection because this is quite smart. So I'm going to have the same cutaway or maybe a slightly different one just for interest's sake uh, in the flutes. Uh, so this time I've highlighted the bars that I want to cut out. I've gone to change, and I'm going to again go to my um, others, and I'm going to go to hidden. OK, and good. Yeah, let's get that right. I should zoom in, but anyway, that's close enough. Now you'll see that because I had it selected, it's gone to hidden here where the selection started and then back to the instruments that it was using beforehand. It's using the uh, short version, uh, short name. You can change that. Um, and um, uh, therefore, it's saved you a couple of steps. The other thing that you can do if you've got frequent um, cutting in and cutting out is that you can actually copy the staff type change. So if I want to go and put the change to no uh, instrument hidden in a series of uh, instruments in different bars, uh, like these, these kind of endings here, it's going to be quicker for me to just copy that. And remember, I'm using Sibelius's quick copy. So that's just clicking on. Uh, one symbol and then holding down the alt or option key to uh, click on uh, to, to sorry to copy it quickly so select the thing you want to copy hold down alt or option and then click to put it in now um, Schockhausen does do a few other naughty things in here in terms of what you might expect to see and not expect to see if we zoom in a little bit we'll note that the um, we'll note that the uh, uh, staff stretches out beyond the bar line and has the clef in it. Now as you discovered yesterday this is nice and easy to do in terms of uh, changing where the um, instrument change happens. We can just simply drag it and that word is moving relative to it so that's no problem at all. If however you go and input the clef at this point and it all around until it's all you know nicely and correctly spaced you'll note that the clef itself is a little bit uh, small and that's because essentially this is uh, acting as a cautionary clef or a, a small clef change in the middle and that's not what we want because here we have a full-sized clef on the on the staff it's not a, a cautionary this is where this starts in this line so, um, unfortunately, the best way to uh, fix that problem is not to use the uh, clef at all. Um, there are workarounds for how you could do it using the clef, but actually it's just quicker since the piccolo is not actually really changing clef. We're just repeating the clef that already exists. It's actually quicker just to use the symbol. So we go Z for symbols, uh, whiz down until we find the clef. Here we go. Clefs. Uh, click on that and ignore the notifications that I'm getting right now. Uh, drag that to the right place. It shouldn't need a uh, you to turn magnetic layout off. But of course, if you can't get it quite where you need it, then do. Uh, if you're not sure exactly how much space you should be al allowing between things like uh, where the bar line is and where the symbol is and how centered it should be, of course, just go and refer to the published version because that's really giving you your publisher house style. So um, 
we've got over that problem. The next thing that we've got is we've got that same thing at the start of the score. So, you know, they really break the rules in that there's no joining line at the start of Stockhausen's score at all. Let's just... Let's find... Here we go. Right, so it looks just the same as it does uh, when they come in in the middle of a page. Uh, so this is a bit of a pain. Uh, with the brackets, that's easy enough to just delete those. But with this line, you found some of you were trying to hide it and discovering that it, it doesn't hide. What you can do is go into the inspector and then take the tick away from initial bar line. We could also get rid of the brackets that way as well. Uh, you can see that you can also turn off uh, the clefts and things like that. So there are ways that we can... Um, uh, change how this looks at this point. However, we might prefer to actually, again, wait until we have finished putting in the score for, for you know, strange layout things that we just can't get around, and then go to our Lines menu and find the vertical line and put it in, and if it misbehaves, again, uh, turn off um, the magnetic layout for that object. Again, that's going to let us get closer to something like this. Another reason why you can't really use standard bar lines, and this is actually the same later on in the piece here, you can see we've got solid bar lines between these instruments and dotted bar lines here. So we discovered if you use the invisible um, or the hidden staff type, um, but with uh, bar lines shown, which is this one, if you use that one, then it does allow the bar lines to extend, but you can't actually change the bar lines from a, uh, a, th a full thick bar line to a dashed bar line midway down the system. Uh, Sibelius will do both. Uh, we can do that here, notations, bar lines, and you can see there's dashed, but it's going to be the same the whole way down. It's, we can't choose thick here and dashed there or, or full here and dashed there. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to uh, just use the normal full uh, full bar lines where we need full and then where we need dashed we're going to draw that in again uh, using this time a dashed uh, vertical line. Now if you find um, that you want to create some kind of line that isn't here, uh, I'll just put that one in since I've gone to the trouble of doing it, or as we discovered yesterday when we were trying to create a, a dashed line that is actually thicker than the line you're joining it with. So you see how that's just, uh, that, that one is the same thickness, so that's not, zoom right in, uh, so that's not sticking outside the line. But we did discover some that were thicker than staff lines when we were trying to do dashed staff lines. So if you do need to actually make any changes, again, find the lines menu, it's under the notations tab, click on the little extra um, uh, dialog to go to the edit lines dialog box. And then what you can do is, I think yesterday it was a dashed line like this, but we needed to make a thinner one. So you can click on that. Uh, you could edit it, but I would suggest you make a new one. It'll appear right at the bottom of the menu. You can say yes, dashed line, I'm gonna call this one dashed line thinner, thinner. And we discovered that if you make that uh, width uh, 0.1 or 0 0.10, doesn't make any difference, uh, then you uh, will end up with a, um, a dashed line which is the same thickness as the uh, staff line. Does Stockhausen use those or was that in a different score? Let's just have a quick look. Uh, no, I think that maybe that was in the, um, uh, that was in the Penderecki, wasn't it? Uh, the uh, Threnody for the Victims of Hiroshima. But we do have a single line here, so perhaps you need this to be the same thickness as the staff line. And so you can actually go and create your own line, and then, as I say, yeah, that will appear at the bottom of the lines menu. He lied. It will appear in the same... <laughs> Maybe it will appear in the... Here we go. It'll appear in the same group. I'm sorry. Uh, it'll appear in the same group in the lines menu. You can see their dashed line thinner. That's the one that I just made. And uh, let's go and create this just to prove a point. Again, you might need to turn off magnetic layout. It just depends on how the particular line, font, text, whatever works. I'm just going to shift that up. Note when I'm doing these uh, little um, 
uh, adjustments. I'm going right in to make sure that I'm zoomed. And then I'm not trying to drag that line around. I'm just using the up and down or left and right arrow keys to nudge it. Uh, the other thing that I'm often doing is um, moving between different points of the line with option and left and right arrow. So option left, and I can now move that end of the line. Option right, uh, once is going to give me the whole line. And option right again is going to, and that's alt and right on a Windows computer, is going to allow me to grab the end line. If you do that on a slur, uh, you'll discover that you've got many more points on a slur. So uh, let's just, is that going to, it's not really, you can't, that is going between the points, but it's actually a little bit hard to see because of the fact that it's red. Um, so, yes. Um, right, is there anything else that we uh, covered yesterday that's sort of really important for this? Uh, let's look at Stockhausen just to to be sure. I'm going to leave you to sort out things like that. Lucky you. We've covered all of those kind of things, definitely. Let's zoom out. Uh, we've talked about that line. We've talked about the dotted line. Ah, yes, here we've got, um, is it a bar number or a rehearsal mark? I imagine a bar number. Uh, with a circle around it, so you'll need to edit a text style to create that. Uh, you can either uh, do it and do it with bar numbers, or if they're irregular, so you can't use a rule in Sibelius's engraving rule, you can create a circled text style uh, and put them in manually. Uh, what else have we got here? Metronome mark you'll find under the um, uh, under the uh, text styles that you can add. No, I think that's pretty much everything. I think everything here we've covered. Good. Okay, well, good luck with the uh, challenge this week. Um, I think that that will, um, uh, that should, uh, that in combination with everything that we've done in the previous weeks should leave you all in good stead to, um, to complete that one. And uh, I'll be returning to um, look at your final assignments after this one as well. I think that Jess and I are going to share the marking of that one. So I uh, look forward to seeing more and more of your work as the weeks go on.